the uh, in the previous video we have talked about the basic idea of data science and the workflow of data science. We also talked about two kinds of data. The first one is the linked data and the second one is the knowledge graph. Now we come to the third kind of data, which is the temporal data. Temporal data is also called time series or streaming data. Here, we are not primarily primarily interested in entities or relationships between entities, but how the data changes over time. In this image, we are showing temperature data as it changes across the globe, which could be important if we're studying for climate change. For example, we might worry about how the temperature in the ocean is rising and what the effect is over the ecosystem. And the fourth type of data is tabular data. This might be used by city governments to show uh, to show their uh, the data they collected and make it public publicly available. We want to find out the links between different features, which which is also like different columns in this ta tabular data. For example, for the first row, we can see that one taxi picked up one passenger and traveled for 15.1 miles. And it also shows the pickup longitude and pickup latitudes of this taxi. So this can show the pickup location. And from these tabular data, we can get some information such as the average length of their trips and the most frequent pickup location. For example, GeoCoder will take the latitude and longitude and give street address. So this might be meaningful. Furthermore, we can even use Google Maps to visualize the location. So after talking about four types of data, we want to know what makes the data big data. The data, the thing that make data big is the size, it can be the size. It can be, uh, the data can be too big for an Excel spreadsheet or too big for the main memory in a computer. And data might be heterogen, it also might be the heterogeneity of the data. And the data might be rapidly changing or streaming or requiring, requiring a different type of processing. Even if we just focus on the size of the data, there are more issues that must be addressed. The size is affected by both the number of the rows, which means the observations, and also the number of columns, which means the features of the data. When number of rows is very big, we cannot just use brute force or naive algorithm. We have to worry about the efficiency. It also may require us to use parallelism to speed up the computation. When number of the columns is big, we might have to reduce the number of features and using feature selections and dimensionality reduction. Feature selection means that the process where you automatically or manually select those features which contribute most to your prediction variable or output in which you're interested. Dimensionality reduction is the process of redu reducing the number of random variables under consideration by obtaining a set of principal vari variables. So what does data analytics involve?
The goal of data, data analytics is to make the raw data to get some information from the raw data, to get the knowledge from it, and to take action. So if we get uh, raw data, we want to first clean and regularize it. And then the next step is to understand the data and look for a specific pattern of the data. We can do this by hand, or we can use visualization tools to get an idea. Once we understand what this data is about, we can make hypotheses. We can we can uh, we need we might need to generate more data to test our hypothesis so we might want to design an experiment that generates more data about the truth of our hypothesis and fin finally we can use our hypothesis uh, use our statistics and data to test our hypothesis So here are some of the activities that's it, that is involved in data analytics. Acquisition, access, wrangling, integration, representation, cleaning, filtering, hypothesizing, querying, and analyzing, modeling, and understanding, iterating, and exploring. And very important parts of analytics are ethical issues, which must be considered at each step along the way in this pipeline. Here is an example of the ethical issue. So one of the first data science problem posts to the community at large from about a decade ago was called Netflix Price. Netflix wanted to improve their recommendation strategy for the customers. So they shared their anonymized data with public and asked for solutions. They provide a million dollar prize. So there was a lot of available data that they, print, that they provided and uh, everyone used different challenging extract uh, different methods to extract the data. They want to extract the different features and use them in various ways to make predictions. But Netflix challenge ultimately revealed another issue that we always need to consider in data science space. It turned out that Clever researchers were able to co correlate the anonymous Netflix viewership information with review posted to internet movie database and reverse engineer who many of the viewers were. So in many ways, Netflix challenge is a microcosm of the kinds of issue one encounters in data science techniques to extract the right features, techniques for machine learning, computing at a very large scale, and being aware of data privacy and other ethical issues. Here's another example. Over the decades, in innovation in technologies to collect genomic information have provided tremendous amount of data, and algorithms and techniques have been developed for its analysis. This was the precursor of it, what it is now happening in many different fields across the humanities, political science and economics, and etc. So high throughput gene sequencing allows us to capture a vast amount of DNA and use it to do interesting things. This information also enables other things such as personalized med medicine, developing treatment plans for individuals rather than a generic treatment plan. So here's an example of the pipeline showing in this graph. 
So it performs the wrangling discussed earlier and align with other data banks and make predictions. Here are some of the data science myths versus reality. The main idea is that data science requires human insights, in particular by domain scientists. It is not just turning the crank using statistics and machine learning. Here, here are the things that you should consider when embarking on a data science project. What question are you answering? What is the right scope of the project? What data will you use? What techniques are you going to try? How will you evaluate your results? And what maintenance will be required? Disclaimer and recap. So, Data science is not always about machine learning, and there's a large part of it is not does not involve machine learning. We we might need to work with the as, experts to understand the domain, and to understand assumptions and questions. We need to try to catalog and make sense of the data sources. We need to wrangling, extracting, and integrating the data. We need to clean and wrangle. We need to clean and wrangle data. So here's a recap of what we learned in the video, in today's video. What data science involves. Data is high dimensional, hard to understand, and requires an understanding of computation and costs. Given an integrated data set, data science involves extracting and selecting features as well as adding semantic structures to the data. So this means that we need to extract and regularize our raw data and extract specific fit specific features from those data and sometimes we need to add some semantic structures to them to make appropriate models for predictions and if you're interested in data science you may discover many applications of data science in the real world from discovery to clustering to classification and to recommendation. So that's the that's all for today's video. And thank you for your time.